1990, um, I was speaking at a UFO conference over in uh, Palm Springs, Palm Springs, California. And I was speaking at a conference there. And this, this guy I noticed was dressed typical like a hippie, had the, had the uh, uh, psychedelic shirt on and, and uh, thongs, and lo but he had long hair all the way down his back, long hair, blonde, and was very soft-spoken, uh, and he presented himself as a, just a hippie. But I knew instinctively he was not, because his mannerisms spoke of culture, money, his whole mannerism was, you know, he's not who he's, he's portraying himself to be. And so he came over to me and he said, Jordan, uh, I'd like to invite you to take you to dinner across the street. I want to talk with you. And I thought, that's interesting. Whoever this guy is, he looked to be about maybe 30, 35. Uh, and he said, I want to talk with you. I have something to tell you. So would you go to dinner with me? I said, sure. So we go across the street. It was in Palm Springs during the summer. It was very warm at night. We went to a Mexican restaurant, sat outside, and uh, it was a beautiful night. And he says, um, he said, I have something to tell you. He said, it's not going to happen right now. It's going to happen later on in your life. So you don't have to worry about it now. But one day, you're going to have two men come to you and they're going to ask you to go with them to a very important city on the East Coast. And they will not threaten you. There will not be any threats. But they're going to ask you to come with them. And they are, they are going to bring you to a very important place in back East where very powerful people are. And they're going to, uh, and the reason why they're coming for you is they have a business proposition they want to make with you. They want to, they got a business proposition. They want to talk with you about it. And he said, you can agree to go with them because they will not harm you. And he said, they're just businessmen. And he said, but when you go, the building you will go into has, I can't remember if he said 12 or 13. I think he said 13 steps. Maybe it's 12. Anyway, he said, but there, there will be beautiful marble steps, and there will be 12 of them. When you're walking up those marble steps, you remember I told you that this was going to happen. And the two guys will be bringing you to meet a very important man. And he says, and the proposition is going to be simply this, that if you can do your work and leave certain subjects alone, do whatever you want, talk about anything you want on all of this, the religion and philosophies and all this stuff. Do whatever you want here, <clears throat> but leave these subjects alone. Forget them. Don't even talk about them. Then if you can agree to that, they will then, he said to me, they will make you their golden boy. You will be on magazine covers. You will be in newspapers. They will promote you in movies. And you will be you'll be living very good, and they will protect you and promote you, and uh, you'll have a very good life. And if you, and so I said, suppose I decide I, I, I don't want the, the deal. He said, they're not going to threaten you. It's just a, a business deal. And what they will say to you, what this man will say to you, well, if you, if you cannot agree to this, um, then we will have to consider you to be our enemy. And we will have to act accordingly. And he said then, and they made a very big point of this, he said they will tell you <clears throat> that you don't need to make a decision now. You tell them how long you want before you give them a decision. If it's six days, six weeks, six months, it doesn't matter to them. They don't care. You tell them how long you want to think about it. Whatever you tell them, they will accept. But when the day comes that you set, you have to give them an answer. Are you with us or against us? And he says, then at that day, you have to give them an answer because they're very serious. They can make you or break you. And he says, and so, <clears throat> that's, so I asked him, I said, why are you telling me this? 
And he says, because it's going to happen. It will happen. Not for a long time, but one day it will happen. So I think it is better that you start thinking about this because it's going to be serious. You're going to be facing some very powerful people. And they're not playing games. So you better start thinking about it. So I said to him, I said, well, what should my answer be? He said, oh, no, no, I can't do that. That's up to you. That's your, your, your call. And he said, all I will tell you is this, that whatever your decision you will make will affect you when you die. That I will tell you. If you make the wrong decision when you die, you're going to pay for it on the other side. They're going to be waiting for you. So the implication was, I got from it, if you want to live good now, go with the flow. But when you die, you've got spiritual price you have to pay because you, you, know, you sold out kind of thing. He didn't say that, but that's what I gathered that whoever your spiritual companions are in the universe sent you here not to sell out. And so he says, so just think about it. It'll come one day. That's it. And so he used to show up every now and then. He would show up at lectures of mine. I would see him. He called himself Cosmos. And I said, what is your real name? He says, not important. Just call me Cosmos. He was always very, very kind, very courteous, very generous with me. And um, he would pop up all the time. Anytime I was speaking in San Francisco, he'd pop up. And one day, quite a few years ago, I was in San Francisco at a, at a, giving a lecture, and a lady was buying a tape or a book from me at my table, and the book fell on the floor. And I couldn't go around the table to pick it up for her, but Cosmos was standing next to her. So he leaned down to pick it up for her. And when he did, a medallion fell out of his hippie shirt. And the moment I saw it, I knew what it was. It was a brilliantly designed double-headed eagle, Masonic double-headed eagle, with a triangle of a red, probably ruby, it was about that size, but it had a triangle ruby with 33 uh, embedded on it, cut on the ruby. And it was sitting on top of the double-headed eagle of Freemasonry. And when I saw that, for the first time I reached out and grabbed it, because it was a long, long chain, and I said, 33rd degree Mason? And he said, no, Council of 33 meaning he's not just a 33rd degree Mason, he's on the Council of 33. In Washington, D.C., there are 33 men that run world masonry. And, uh, and it's called the Council of 33. And he's on it. And I said to him, I said, Cosmos, well, you are 33rd degree when you talked with me a few years ago in Palm Springs. He said, yes. And I said, I don't understand what's going on here. And he said to me, Jordan, you go all around the world talking about political leaders, talking about the Queen of England, you badmouth the Pope, you badmouth people, you, you know, you, you, you jumping on everybody and doing what you're doing. Has anyone ever harmed you? I said, no. Has anybody tried to arrest you or to frighten you or do anything to you? I said, no. And he said, have you ever wondered why? And I said, I've never thought about it. He said, no one has harmed you because of us. We are protecting you. We follow you everywhere you go. We know what you're doing. And we're protecting you. The Council of the 33 is protecting you. And I said, I really don't understand this. And he said, you don't need to. All you need to know is that we are protecting you. We know exactly who you are and what you're doing and where you go, and no one's going to harm you.